Okay, so before we get started in the actual painting, I want to um, prep the canvas first. So I want to make sure there's a color down, basically, before we move into um, the black and white painting, because if there's no color, you won't be able to see the white. So we need to have a little wash on the canvas. So a wash is basically just a lot of water and a little bit of color. So because we're doing our painting, just a value painting in black and white, we are going to use, I'm just gonna do orange, it's a pretty good contrast. So go ahead and get a little yellow and a little red. Mix that together. Get a nice little orange and then get a lot of water on your brush. And that's probably all the paint we'll need, honestly, maybe a tiny bit more. But you just wanna kinda go around here, get this paint all over the canvas, haphazardly, it doesn't need to be anything special. You won't be seeing this, except while you're painting. <laughs> but when you're done, you won't see the orange. Okay, now you can either go in and wipe it off with a paper towel, not totally wipe it off, but like push it into the canvas basically, or you can just let it dry. Here, call. I'm pretty impatient. That's why I love acrylic painting, so I'm gonna just wipe it off so it dries faster. So now I'm gonna go in with my middle brush here. This is not a huge brush. It's, you know, uh, I don't really know. What, this is a size eight, but sizes don't really <laughs> mean a lot because all the brands have different sizing. Um, but this is like a mid-size brush. So with this, I'm going to mix up a little bit of a gray, more white than black, because I just want sort of a mid-tone color. This is so that I can draw the bell pepper on there. So I'm going to really focus here on the overarching shape first. And the overarching shape that I see here is like kind of ovally here. So I'm gonna hold my brush kind of far back for starters and loosely kind of sketch in what I see here. Okay, I want to make sure I get the stem in. Okay, I'm kind of high up here. This is a great lesson, guys. So I'm going to just wipe this back in. Get a little more orange. I don't want to make a compromise too early in the game. So I'm going to do that. And try again. So I'll start a little lower this time, maybe down here. This guy comes up here. And from here, okay, cool. So I got that. So a couple um, tricks I'm going to show you when I get in this area because just kind of one big space. I'm going to use uh, my brush itself to get some of the angles down. 
So this is a trick I like to use um, when I'm looking at an image or when I'm out, you know, doing plein air, especially of buildings uh, where there's all sorts of angles. So, you know, if you can, you can hold your brush up to a roof line and get that angle and then just pull it down to your painting and drag. So I'm going to show you how we do that. So I hold this up to this angle right here and go like this to make sure I got the right angle. It looks like I mostly did, but I'm going to pull this over here a little bit. And then here's an angle too, like this, which I also mostly got here. I'm going to do that and then come up here. And when I'm drawing things in, I do a lot of relationship stuff. So where are things in relationship to one another? That's really helpful. So for example, right here, where this little hump comes in to this other little hump. So we have, I just did this one part right here, that little guy, it's kind of tall up here and then it gets shorter right there. And then this hump over here comes into like the midway point of that. So it's like this. And then we have another one back there. And um, I don't know if you noticed when I was doing this too, I also use things like this where I would do an imaginary line connecting that bottom, the two bottoms to see what angle that would be at to make sure I get that as well. Oops, that went a little further down than I wanted to go. And then this kind of comes up right here, hinting at a shape. So I'm going to do this and then it kind of curves in here in this area. Okay, like this, and then we have this guy basically going into there. This comes down and then we have a little baby glimpse of one of those back there. This comes into this area right here of the stem. So I can use that as a reference point. And then we have one more right there that goes out. And straight down and connects to there. So this comes out here, connects there. I think I might've gone out a little too far here, but no problem, I can go and fix that up in the background. So here we go, basic um, red bell pepper here. I'm gonna come and get this, I'm just noticing it's a little bit longer than I have. And this goes a little. All right, cool. So that's gonna be good enough for my drawing. Now I'm gonna rinse my brush really well and dry it. And I'm gonna get just pure black cause I'm gonna go in and try and figure out where my darkest darks are first, just the darkest darks. So there's many darks in this, but the darkest darks I see are here and then just right up in here under the stem. So I'm gonna go put those in and just think of it as shapes. It kind of stops right there. Goes down here and then this area right there is very dark. And that's it for our darkest darks. So then rinse your brush really well. And we're gonna switch to our lightest lights. So for our lightest lights, um, Again, squint, check out where you see the lightest lights. Mine are here, especially here on the stem, a couple dots here, here and there on these guys. And then these big shapes right here, along with that little one. So I'm going to go ahead and put those in and I'm going to think of them just purely as shapes. Okay. So this is also at this point, you can make some adjustments because right now I'm seeing like this kind of goes out a little bit more. Um, and these lines that are here are really, they're just for you. So um, you will paint over them when you see that it's necessary to do so, like this, for example, where this real big highlight is here. Okay. And 
that shape here. We got this one. And I'm trying to think of this as just a big old shape. Gets a little bigger here and a little bit more narrow here. And it honestly does get a little bit darker down here, so I don't need to necessarily make this white. I kind of blend it in, that sort of works. Um, okay, now I'm gonna do this other one right here. Then I have this guy. This is more of a line than anything, really. Okay, then I'm going to get up here. And right there. And then I do see a little tiny smidgen right there. And a tiny little highlight. You notice at the very tops of these guys, I'm seeing little tiny highlights too. Okay. So now we have our darkest darks and our lightest lights. And I'm gonna squint and make sure, like double check I got all this. This one actually seems a little bit fatter to me than I have. So I'm just going to go and make that a little fatter. This one's pretty good for the most part. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to my darks and work from the darkest to the lightest. So that means basically starting at black and then adding a little bit of white to it. Not a ton, just a little. So I have a dark that's not black. So for example, in some areas I'm like, okay, it's not the darkest dark, but this is a really dark area. And there's also some really dark areas up here in the stem. So I'm gonna go in and add some of those. You can always overpaint. I like to overpaint shadow areas because I always end up painting into them. So that's pretty dark. Down here is pretty dark too. Maybe not quite that dark, but close enough. And then right under here, under the stem. Also along the edge over here is really dark. And back in here. Okay, now I'm going to go a little lighter than that. So I'm going to add some more white. And what's the next lightest area that you see? To me, it's pretty much all the stuff around this. Almost fell. Okay, down 
here. Maybe this is more like this color, actually. Right. I don't see too much that's that dark anymore, so I'm going to add more white. And then I have a good kind of, we're sort of at like mid-tone, which means that that's going to be a lot of this area. So kind of the same color I see back in here. noticing a little error out here there's a couple ways I can handle that I can either get my brush wet just with fresh water and come in here and kind of pull it up and I can use just a use a dry rag here see like that to kind of get rid of that or I can let it dry and paint over it which is typically what I do because honestly I think if you get too finicky it ends up just being a total mess so but that's your choice I just kind of want to show both options mm, might need a little more black here to get this area back And I see a little bit of a dark right in there, too. See what I mean about overpainting the shadow areas? Because they just get light really fast. You end up painting over them really quickly. So I'm going to get some of this back in, some of my shadow, dark shadow in here. Okay, and then maybe this guy is in here. Yeah, that's probably not that dark. It's probably closer to like this color. Okay, now I want to do a little bit lighter. Yeah. I'm gonna get that black off my brush. I want to go a little bit lighter and just kind of touch up some areas that I see. Like down in here, I didn't quite finish up because it's a lighter version still. So I'm going to go in here and this will probably be like one of my lightest colors. And I think this will be good to kind of blend in this area too. So it's not such a stark contrast.
And then I'm noticing out here on the edge, I kind of lost that dark edge that I had. Now I'll go back in here, kind of get some of that little transition. Transition. Is there anywhere else? I feel like it gets dark in there. Like in this spot right here. And right in here is also pretty dang dark. Right here is also dark. Just along there. That's not that dark. It's more like this. Okay, then I'm gonna go in and just with my detail brush, grab a couple little details I see, which are not really that many, to be honest. I see still really dark, but not black in here. Just some little details. Gets a little lighter right here too. This is really dark, but not black. And that's actually black right there. And just add some pure black in here too, even though that's not actually there, but it'll blend with these other colors underneath it. And you can blend in lots of ways. Sometimes I blend with my fingers. Sometimes I'll do it with the brushes. Sometimes I don't blend much. There's so many options. So the last thing I see is like down here. I think this is maybe a little darker than it needs to be at the bottom. Gets closer to like this color. And then this color. And I think this is the one that actually is a little too far down. Whoops, apparently I have some other paint on there. <laughs> Let's get that off. I think I could maybe even get a little darker in here. Like a cross between these two colors. Oops. Last thing I'm going to do is touch up some of my highlights because that's uh, your top marks are always kind of your highlights. So anytime I went over my highlights, I want to kind of fix that up like right in here. I 
that guy. There we go. I'm going to call that good. There is my lovely little red bell pepper that is actually black. 